Hoi everyone. I am just going to be reacting to a game. <coughs> a long, beautiful stomach. And after a while, huh. you'll make it to tier 8, where you touch her horn for the very first time. Very special. What about tier 15? Stay away from that. Do not do tier 15. seen this one announcements we are going to do a meme slash art slash photoshop contest with my dog in the description you will find a link to a load of pictures you can use to make some cool stuff i will pick a winner after a week and the winner will get a major shout out in a video and on my twitter and instagram you enter by posting the picture on instagram twitter or facebook and using the hashtags wiley arts and chucktastic so be sure to check it out. A summary of all of this will be in the description. Now, let's get to the video. Not many enemies in the Mario universe are as stubborn and tough as this one, the Swamp. These stone guardians have been in the Mario games for quite some time now. And over the years, they changed quite a bit. New variations, complete eh. revamps of the enemy, giving them new roles in the games, and way more. So let's see how this enemy changed over the course of 29 years. Wow. Now this enemy was first seen in Super Mario Bros. 3 in the year 1988. They usually try to squish Mario underneath their weight whenever he passes beneath them. Swamps are easily avoided by using the Statue Mario ability. With this, it's impossible for them to destroy Mario by crushing him from above. There are three ways how to defeat swamps in this game. The first one is hitting a swamp with a star man as Invincible Mario. The second is to throw a hammer at it with the hammer suit. And the third is by using the Tanuki suit and Statue Mario. Now this is a trap enemy. What I mean with this is that this enemy waits for Mario to walk by and tries to take him out by surprising him. We first saw these types of enemies in Super Mario Bros 3. And their purpose was making the game less predictable and linear and more challenging. They also made it harder to sprint through the level since they could attack you out of nowhere. The Swamp is a classic example of this, and it's the entire reason why they created them. They were there to surprise the player and slow them down. Besides that, they were also used in parts where the developers wanted the player to run. For example, the areas in the castles where there were a bunch of them in a row. This was most likely done to create some pressure and excitement. A bit of a wake up for the player if they weren't going fast enough. So the swamp was there to surprise you, slow you down, and create some pressure and excitement from time to time. Now they also reappear in the next game, Super Mario World. They were redesigned and recolored due to the expansion of the palette. Their role stays the same, being smashers that will try to squish Mario or Luigi without a second thought. Swamps have their first mm. subspecies in Super Mario World, and these are the Thwimps. There are smaller Thimps. versions of Thwumps that roam around, usually in small hallways and often come in groups. They are invincible, and are usually only used as obstacles to slow the player down. Now this variant completely lost its element of surprise, but they are more difficult to dodge since they move left to right in an arc. This can make it a bit tricky, especially in combination with the regular Thwomp. Now after this, they went through some changes, all because of one game. Super Mario 64, the first 3D yep. Mario game. And as you could yep. have expected, I this know. enemy wasn't made for 3D, since you can just walk around it. So they had to redesign it a bit. Swamps return in a much different fashion and look more like they did in Super Mario Kart. They, as before, are impossible to destroy and serve as obstacles throughout the game. Unlike the previous games, Swamps constantly slam to the ground, even when Mario is not around. 
This time though, Mario can also use them to his advantage, by jumping on top of them to reach higher areas or unreachable points. And they also have a voice this time. It's a bit of a mad grunt. <clears throat> now overall, yeah. they are very similar to the old thwomps. They still slam down and try to crush you. But Nintendo found a way to use them effectively, by putting them on stairs and narrow ledges. This way, they completely eliminated the factor of going around the enemy. Since you can hardly do that, they essentially turned it into 2.5D. There is depth, but you can't go left or right. And besides that, you can now also use them for parkouring and getting around the level in general. So they essentially revamped them a bit. Additionally, a new species of thwomp, the Grindle, makes its debut in Super Mario cool. 64. They are the same as the normal ones in terms of behavior at least. Only their looks are different, and a similar enemy, the spindle, rolls around trying to squish whoever passes near it. Another cool. thwomp like creature, the Toxbox, is also introduced in this game, and are only found in Shifting Sandland. They roll around by falling on their sides, trying to crush Mario with one of their faces. However, the bottom of the Toxbox is mm. hollowed, allowing Mario to stay safely inside. Another species of thwomp called Bump also makes its first appearance in this game. These enemies resemble walls with eyes that can stick out from the wall and push Mario, sometimes sending him wow. to his death. So they added a load of variants that work in the now 3D world, and all of them try to take you out in different ways. The tox box requires some good timing, since you can't really go around them, and the bombs actually make use of the fact that you can go in the other directions now, since they will just shove you to the side, off the platform. Now sadly enough, yep. the swamp completely lost its trap and surprise aspect. They are more like obstacle enemies now. They slow Mario down and have predictable patterns, mm. and sometimes you have to wait in order to continue through the level. On the other hand, it's a bit lame, since in most cases you just have to wait and go at the right moment, but it doesn't require any good timing. But there was one variant that they added that actually did something new for the enemy, the Womp. In the game, they attempt wow. to crush Mario by falling over, and trying to land on top of him when he gets near. They can be defeated by Mario causing them to fall over and subsequently ground pound on their bandaged backs, their sole weak spot. So these are actually moving enemies that try to chase you, and there's even a king version which serves as some sort of boss. This is a fun change, since they can now actually walk around and are in an enemy form instead of obstacle, but besides that, they are pretty much the same. Gum, tic tac. Tic tac, tic tac has gum. Gum, gum, gum. Tic tac has gum, gum. Who cares? After this, they returned in both 2D and 3D games, like New Super Mario Bros. and the Galaxy series. In the 2D games, they are very similar to the older versions from games like Super Mario World. Sure, they got a little visual update, but besides that, they are essentially the same. We only saw one new variation that was a bigger version. That's it. And the 3D games? Hmm. Well, they did some new things with them in Super Mario Galaxy. Swamps in this game are once again spiked, though the spikes are blunt at the end and appear to have been carved, unlike their previous incarnations. Because of this, the sides can be touched without taking damage. In some cases, it is actually necessary for Mario to wall jump off of them to reach certain platforms and areas. Additionally, if Mario stands on top of a swamp, and it rises in the air, he can jump to carry the Thwomp's momentum into his jump, and perform an extra high jump. In Super Mario Galaxy, they generally act the same as they did in the other games, waiting until Mario gets close to them, and then smashing to the ground in an attempt to crush him. If yep. Mario does get crushed, he instantly loses a life, regardless of how much health he had. So they are used more for platforming, and actually in quite impressive ways, and their difficulty was also increased, since they now one-hit you. I don't really get why they increased their damage, since they were already challenging enough. We did see two mm. new types of thwomps in the second Galaxy game, the Rumps and the Flump. Uh, the names aren't that creative. <laughs> but that's not important for now. The Rumps attack by rolling towards Mario in an attempt to crush him. So these are the same as the spindle from Super Mario 64, they just look different. In my opinion, this isn't a real variation. It's too similar to the spindle, but the flump? Now that's something new. 
They are platforms with a foam-like face that move around. And when they rattle, their face turns angry and they flip over. If Mario or Luigi stands on the flump when it flips, it will knock them high into the air. So these enemies can be a bit surprising and require some actual timing. It goes back to the roots of the enemy. It's a bit of an unpredictable mm. enemy that can surprise you. And I actually like that a lot. Like it's a trap enemy. The romp. Now in the games that came after these, they only added three new variations. And besides that, nothing really happened. Nothing worth mentioning at least. First up, the tail form from Super Mario 3D Land. They mm. can jump about yeah. in a wide set area, unlike the regular stationary version. When they float, it is reminiscent of the way Tanuki Mario floats, complete with the sound effect. Now these are a combination of the power-up and the enemy. Now, it doesn't do a whole lot new, it just moves a bit. It's a bit too basic in my opinion. Da, 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 da. No, 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 we have done this two times now. It's, it's done. <laughs> now this was a bit of a disappointment. <laughs> they could have done way more with this combination. But the next one is interesting and refreshing in my opinion. The Wall Up and Wall Eye from Super Mario 3D Land and World respectively. They both look huh. like Womps, except that they are shaped like a wall. Instead of attempting to squish Mario and Luigi by slamming onto the ground when they get too close, they block the player's way by following their movements. So these are actually walls that block your way, and you have to figure out on how to get past them. This is a great design, since this finally solves the problem of going around the obstacle. This enemy was completely designed around the 3D world. And the wall up is the easy version, and the wall eye is the more difficult version, since he has spikes. Finally, Nintendo came up with a great thwomp for the 3D environment. Now don't get me wrong, they also had some good ones in Super Mario 64, but this one has to be one of the best. And lastly, we have the Grumblumps. They are blocks that start to roll around once you step on them. That's it. They are mostly used to get through the level, but overall don't do anything mind-blowing or special. They're just a small obstacle. In the spin-off games, well, yep. here nothing interesting happened. A small meaningless character or variation here and there, but besides that, yeah. only the regular swamp was seen. So this enemy went through a number of changes in the main series, but sadly enough, didn't really change in the spin-off games. But still, it's a real classic. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope Bye you everyone, hope you had a great time. Be sure to like, subscribe. Hey, I'm doing an outro here. Bye everyone, hope you had a great time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos. Now you can talk. And also be sure to Nope. <laughs> Bye.